Austin Powers International Man of Mystery by Mike Myers. Enter Dr. Evil's private quarters, daytime. The lair is a 1960s high tech. We see a huge oversized conference table with six scary looking evil associates, including a Latin American revolutionary in a field jacket and turtleneck, twin Nordic doctors, and a meter maid. Angle on a ring with Dr. Evil's insignia on it. The ringed hand is stroking a white fluffy cat. Dr. Evil, face always unseen. Gentlemen, why are we all here? Good. As you know, my plot to hijack nuclear weapons and hold the world hostage has failed, again. This organization will not tolerate failure. He presses a button. The revolutionary, the twin Nordic doctors, and the meter maids tip chairs tip back and fall into a pit. Their chairs return empty and smoking. Dr. Evil says, Mustafa. Angle on to Mustafa, an Arab with a red fez. Frau Farbanisana. Angle on Frau Farbanisana in a severe Salvation Army uniform. Dr. Evil, I spared your lives because I need you to help me rid the world of the only man who can stop me now. We must go to London. I've set a trap for Austin Powers. Enter. New scene. Carnaby Street, daytime. Music, Soul Bossa Nova by Quincy Jones. We start on a pair of beetle boots and peg-topped peg crushed velvet pants walking down the street in rhythm a la Saturday Night Fever. We pan up to reveal Austin Powers, international man of mystery. He's a swinger with medium-length mod hair and sideburns he wears National Health Service's glasses. Austin walks along Carnaby Street taking photographs. It is that perpetual bright day, sunny day you see in 60s movies. Austin, bursting with life, gives a two-handed handshake to a mod freak who's just gotten off a red double-decker bus. Austin salutes a strolling bobby, then comes across two beautiful mod girls who are excited to see him. They all start to twist to the music, including Bobby. Freeze frame, Technicolor blue tint, title card, production note, all title cards will be done in Technicolor, freeze frames a la sweet charity. In the middle of the street, three models wait impatiently to be photographed in a makeshift photo shoot area. One wears a short skirted stewardess outfit. One wears a metallic silver pantsuit with matching cowl. The other wears a see-through Mary Quant dress. Austin, taking photos. All right, love. Love it. Turn pout for me, baby. Smashing. We see that Austin has very bad English teeth. The model in the stewardess outfit foes on all fours. Crazy baby, Austin. Crazy baby. Give me some shoulder. Yes, yes, yes. In brackets. Beat. No, no. Show me love. Yes. And done. Here you go, love. I'm spent. Austin throws the camera in the air behind him. An assistant scrambles and catches it before it hits the ground. Austin. Get, get, uh, wait, get these off to Fab Magazine right away. Supermodel 1. Austin, you've really outdone yourself this time. Austin. Thanks, baby. Supermodel 2. Suggestively. We could have another photo session back at my fat my flat austin coyly says oh behave supermodel three austin i love you austin so many women so little time a gaggle of mod girls come towards the shoot site they recognize austin and scream hysterically mod girl one it's austin powers austin runs away the mob chases after him a la hard day's night new scene at Carnaby Street. Two bad guys attack Austin. He judo chops them. Austin, judo chop, judo chop. The mob of girls catch up to Austin and he runs away. Enter new scene, photo booth. Austin in a photo booth with his back turned. The mob runs by. He steps out, disguised only by 
a beard. You see. Guard station. London. Day. Austin is jiving down the street and comes across a stone-faced, red-coated Buckingham Palin guard standing at attention just outside his guard box. Austin mugs for the guard, trying to get him to crack up, but to no avail. Finally, he pulls a big 60s flower from behind the guard's head and presents it to him. They both crack up and enter into the photo booth. Back to the photo booth. The girls run by a 60s era photo booth with someone inside. Austin steps out, angle on the film strip. Panels 1 to 3 show Austin with various exotic models. The fourth panel shows Austin with the Queen. Uh, Entering Carnaby Street, Austin Pot spots a pregnant hippie girl with a placard card saying protest in a funky font. Austin, you might want to protest a bit louder next time, love. They both laugh. 2L full screen insert of Austin's passport. The passport opens. We see Austin's dour photo. Then he gives an insane grin, showing his bad teeth. The page flips, and we see visa stamps from all the exotic places he's been. Carnaby Street. Day. Austin flips a coin into a blind man's cup. The blind man, obviously sighted, moves the cup to catch the coin. Austin wags his finger in a OU oh, fashion, and then proceeds to knee him in the balls. Entering Carnaby Street. Daytime. Austin is being chased around the corner by a gaggle of schoolgirls. After a moment, Austin returns from around the corner with a baton, followed by a marching band. The schoolgirls pick up his trail again, and he begins to run. A 1967 XKE convertible, which is decorated with a large Union Jack, pulls up beside Austin. He jumps over the door into a moving convertible, racing just uh, off just ahead of the crowd. Entering the Jaguar, the streets of London, daytime. The driver of the Jag is Austin's associate, Mrs. Kensington. They drive against obvious rear projection of 1960s London. Austin. Hello, Mrs. Ken Kensington. Mrs. Kensington. Hello, Austin. Just then, a flashing red light goes off and we hear a distinctive phone ring. Mrs. Kensington. That, that'll be Basil Exposition, Chief of British Intelligence. The glove compartment revolves to reveal the picture phone, angle on picture phone screen. We see Basil Exposition, an exposition, chief of British intelligence. Basil Exposition on the picture phone. Hello, Austin. This is Basil Exposition, chief of British intelligence. You're Austin Powers, international man of mystery, and you're with Agent Mrs. Kensington. The year is 1967, and you're walking on, talking on a picture phone. Austin, we know all that. Exposition. Basil exposition. I just wanted to be extremely clear so that everyone knows what's going on at any given time. We've just received word that Dr. Evil, the ultimate square, is planning to take over the world. Austin, Dr. Evil? I thought I'd put him in jail for good. Basil Exposition. I'm afraid not. Earlier this week, Dr. Evil escaped from Zedel A. Idol Prison in Biden, Biden, and now he's planning a trap for you tonight at the Electric Psychedelic Pussycat Swingers Club in Piccadilly Circus here in Swinging London. A panel revolves to reveal a map of London with lights showing Austin's position and the location of the club. Austin. Just where you'd think to look for him. Oh, just where you'd never think to look for him. We'll be there. Basil Exposition. Good luck, Austin. Austin, thank you. Basil Exposition. Oh, and Austin and him dash. Yes, Austin says. Basil Exposition. Pause. Be careful. Austin, thank you. To Mrs. Kensington. Let's go, baby. Entering the stock photage Piccadilly Circus nighttime. On top of one building is a three-story high Bob's big boy figure. Entering Electric Psychedelic Pussycat Swingers Club at nighttime. The Jaguar pulls up in front of the swinging nightclub. Mrs. Kensington steps out of the car, dressed in a tight leather fight suit. She looks fabulous. Entering the Electric Psychedelic Pussycat Swingers Club. 
It's a swinging club. Freaks abound. In one corner, there was a press conference in progress. Mick Jagger. Hey, Austin Powers. It's me, Mick Jagger. Austin. Hey, Mick. Mick Jagger. Are you more satisfied now, sexually, Austin? Austin. Well, you can't always get what you want. Mick Jagger, thinking, you can't always get what you want. That's a great title for a song. I'm going to write that, and it'll be a big hit. Austin. Good on you, man. Mick Jagger. Groovy. Full screen insert. A vinyl 45 of You Can't Always Get What You Want. Nine full screen insert. Billboard chart. You Can't Always Get What You Want. At number one. Entering a psychedelic... Pussycat Swingers Club. In one corner, Andy Warhol sits in front of his multicolored Elvis or equivalent. He body paints a butterfly on the thigh of a mod girl wearing a metallic miniskirt outfit. Andy Warhol. Austin Powers? Hi, I'm Andy Warhol. Hey, how, oh, Austin. Hey, how are you? Andy Warhol. Hungry. Austin. Here, have this can of Campbell's tomato soup. Austin hands Andy a can of soup. Andy Warhol, I'm going to paint this can of soup and become famous and not give you any credit for it. Austin, if you become can become famous, everyone will have their 15 minutes of fame, man. Andy Warhol, 15 minutes of fame? I'm going to use that quote and not give you any credit for that either. Austin, smashing. Full screen insert. Andy Warhol's famous soup can painting. Entering. Electric Psychedelic Pussycat Swingers Club. Her Majesty the Queen is giving Austin a Victoria's Cross, just like the Lyndon Johnson scene in Forrest Gump. Behind them are two Coldstream guards and the Duke of Edinburgh. Queen, Austin Powers, Britain owes you a debt of gratitude. Austin gives a cheeky look to Mrs. Kensington. Queen, I understand you were wounded. Where were you hit? Austin, in the buttocks. Queen, that must be a sight. I'd like to see that. Austin turns around, drops his pants, and shows his wounded bum, matching gumps to the queen. The queen walks away. Queen laughing, nice buttocks. In the lineup, we also see Forrest Gump. He has to pee very badly. Mrs. Kensington, we've got to find Dr. Evil. Austin, wait, I've got an idea. He punches a pretty odd girl in the face, knocking her out cold. Everyone, oh, Mrs. Kensington, Austin, why in God's name did you strike that woman? Austin says, that ain't a woman, it's a man, it's one of Dr. Evil's assassins. Austin pulls off the mod girl's wig, she is a male assassin, and the assassin comes and leaps to his feet. Mrs. Kensington knocks his feet from under him, the assassin hits the ground and pulls out a dagger. Mrs. Kensington kicks the knife out of his hand, and Austin gets him in a headlock from behind. Austin, where's Dr. Evil? Angle on. A finger with Dr. Evil's insignia on it. The finger pulls the trigger of a spear gun. The assassin falls to the ground. A spear protrudes from his back. Austin sees Dr. Evil as he runs through a door. They give chase. Inside club, back room, they enter. Dr. Evil climbs into an egg chair. Austin, I've got you again, Dr. Evil. The chair fills with a white mist. Dr. Evil, unseen through mist. Not this time. Come, Mr. Bigglesworth, calling out. See you in the future, Mr. Powers. Before the door clo doors close, the white cat jumps in the ch egg chair. A sign on the egg read reads, Cryogenic Freezing Beginning. Mrs. Kensington, my god, he's freezing himself. Austin begins firing at the egg chair. The ceiling opens up, and the egg rises through the opening. Everything begins to rumble. Rocket exhaust pours out of the ceiling, entering the roof at nighttime. The Bob's Big Boy rocket begins to loofed off, exiting the club on the sidewalk. People outside the club react to the rocket. Entering Earth from space, the Bob's Big Boy rocket leaves the atmosphere. Mr. Biz Bigglesworth is pressed to the window like one of those stuffed Garfields. Dr. Evil, shivering. I'll be back, Mr. Powers, when free love is dead and greed and avarice once again rule the world. Entering NORAD, Colorado Springs, Colorado. Graphic, 1997, NORAD, Colorado Springs. This scene is shot in the multiple split-screen style, like the Thomas Crown Affair. 
16 full screen enter, enter, entering NORAD tracking room. A blip appears on the radar screen. Radar, radar operator on the phone says, Commander Glimmer? Commander Gilmore? 17 screen split 2, entering Commander Gilmore's office. Commander Gilmore, a distinguished man in his 50s. Radar operator on the phone. Commander, this is Slater in Southwest Com 3. We have a potential book bogey with erratic vectoring and an unorthodox entry angle. Commander Gilmore on phone. Is it one of ours? Radar operator, no. Log Com Bird 12 says that its metallurg recon analysis is a standard alloy, not stealthy, not carbon composite. Pause. It does have an odd shape, sir. Commander Gilmore. What are you saying, son? Radar operator. It appears to be in the shape of Bob's Big Boy, sir. 18 screen 3. The Bob's Big Boy rocket. The rocket is dirty and battered from 30 years in space. Commander Gilmore. Oh my god, he's back. Dramatic sting. Radar operator. In many ways, Bob's Big Boy never left, sir. He's always offered the same high-quality meals at competitive prices. Commander Gilmore. Shut up. Radar operator. Should we scramble TAC HQ for an intercept? Commander Gilmore. What's its current position? 19 screen 4. A radar map of Nevada. On the radar screen it says Nevada. Radar screen. It was over Nevada, but oh my god, it's gone. Commander Gilmore. Listen, son. I want you to forget what you saw in here tonight. Radar operator. Commander, I'll have to log it to M- dash. Commander Gilmore, that's a direct order. You didn't see a thing. He hangs up and picks up another phone. Commander Gilmore into the phone. Phillips? Commander Phillips at his desk. Sergeant Phillips picks up the phone. Commander Gilmore, call the president. Screen 6, the White House. Commander Gilmore, prepare the jet. Screen 7, an Air Force jet on runway. Commander Gilmore, get my overnight bag. An overnight bag. Commander Gilmore, Phillips, do me a favor and feed my fish. Fish in a tank, a hand enters and sprinkles fish food. Commander Gilmore, not too much. The hand re-enters and scoops up some of the fish food. Commander Gilmore, I'm going to London, England. Enter, Ministry of Defense, London, England. Graphic, London, England, Ministry of Defense. Rule Britannia is the music. Entering, M.O. Mod, a hallway. Outside the cryogenic storage facility, Basil Exposition, now age 30 years, Commander Gilmore and Nikolai Borshevsky, a Rus Russian general, put on extreme weather gear over their uniforms. Basil Exposition. As you know, gentlemen, Dr. Evil had himself frozen in 1967. Soon after, Austin Powers volunteered to have himself frozen. In the event Dr. Evil should have ever returned, we believe Dr. Evil has begun yet another plot to take over the world, and that, gentlemen, is why we're here. Commander Gilmore. Excellent recap, exposition. Commander Gilmore opens a vault door. Cold mist escapes. Inside the mod cryogenic storage facility, they pass a narrow row of cryogenic holding berths, each containing a naked person in suspended animation, a la Demetlifshin Man. They pass Gary Coleman, Evil Knievel, with cape, and Vanilla Ice, all suspended in animation. They pass...